yeah, that's rough. Yeah, that <laughs> that's not cool. If you think that's a miracle, here's something even more miraculous. You ready for this? I'm ready. Wall and Walters, the two guys who shot him, were not fired. Despite going on patrol without permission and attempting to murder a fellow <laughs> officer, the police chief and the mayor believed that losing them would only make things more chaotic for the department. Decided not to fire them. Did they get in any trouble for it? You know, like a leave of absence or something? If they did, it wasn't immediate because they were told to go out and try to find the blackmailers with everybody else. Wow. I I don't know what kind of a job you can go and shoot your own guy and that's that's okay. Apparently you can well, do that. Well, what's done is done. Let's get out and get the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Police put out a $100 reward for information leading to the arrest of the Triangle Club. No one claimed the reward. No blackmailers were arrested. And the letters stopped. Huh. So that's it? That's pretty much it. There's one little There's one little piece down here. That's pretty much the story. Do you think there was anything to this? Or do you think this, this letter was... These letters were just a practical joke? Well... I don't think they were completely a practical joke because, I mean, they did actually have a box set up. True. So, I mean, they there was some thought put into it. They clearly didn't have any real intentions of killing anybody. Huh. I mean, the, the, the police did more damage to each other did than they? the blackmailers <laughs> did to anybody. Wow. I don't know where to, I don't know what to even say to this story. Yeah. Because this is incredible. And did you look into the possibility, like... Did the Triangle people ever strike again? No, they didn't. They there's no you could find nothing of the no. Triangle. No, they never did. We don't we don't know who they are, and they never they never as far as we know never wrote another letter. Wow, what's the last piece to it then? Well, the last little piece is that on top of all of this, some lawyers got really upset with the police department, not because they were shooting each other. <laughs> Because they they were going out to do a stakeout in the town of Preble, and they said, "Hey, that's all- you're your city cops. That's- you, you can't go out into into Preble. That's like that's the sheriff's territory. You're out of your jurisdiction." And they're like, "You had arrested a guy. The guy could go free. Like <laughs> you you don't have any authority to arrest him." And the mayor the mayor backed up the police on this and. This was this was the mayor's argument. Actually, this is a pretty good argument. The mayor said, let's say there's a police officer standing on a corner, and then a block away, somebody is being murdered, but the next block over is outside city limits. You can't expect the police to just say, well, it's not my territory. I'm just going to stand here because nothing I can do about it. Right. You can also make the argument that this was a premeditated thing they were doing. Yeah. And... They should have known they were out of their jurisdiction and they should have had somebody there that was could properly do the yes. investigation. I don't think the lawyers were probably that upset about that they were outside of their jurisdiction. It was, had you caught these people, we might not have been able to do anything with it because you were being stupid. Right. Yeah, like, you weren't doing what you were supposed to do. Right. Yeah. And, and I actually, yeah, in my notes, I wrote, I have, sometimes I write my little opinions on, on here. And I actually very, very close to what you just said is I feel like the proper thing to do here is like, I get why they would do it because threats came into Green Bay. That makes sense. But at least like call ahead to the sheriff and let him know what you're doing. And and the only argument I could see to make on the Green Bay police's side of that is, is like you said, they were trying to keep this plan Mm -hmm. hush hush on a need to know basis. Yeah. And now... You're talking about bringing in another whole nother police department right. into the fold onto it, which I could see at the same time, you don't really have the right to arrest anybody. Right. <laughs> you know, right. like I don't know the law well enough. I-, I would assume that the Green Bay police could just hold them there, call in a sheriff, and then the sheriff could come and actually arrest them. And that's and that's exactly what the police argued too. They said if we caught somebody and and he got an attorney, and the attorney said, hey, you guys can't legally arrest him. They'd be like, well, all we would have to do was call the sheriff, and the sheriff would show up and rearrest him. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know I mean, if that's how that would play out, but that was their argument exactly. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Not at all what I would have expected. No. How, how did this story surface? 
I always like to hear the history of, of how you discover these things. Sure. There's a book. It's called something. I might have this title wrong, but it's like Title Town Cold Cases or something. I picked that one up. And uh, so there's going to be a couple that are coming out of there. This one was, I mean, nobody died. So there's technically, you know, there's no murder. Um, but I felt there was some mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> because it's definitely, there was some some chaotic uh, situation going on here. Yeah, and I, I totally, this is very worth, a story worth telling. Because, yeah. I mean, it just kind of shows you how bad things can go sometimes, I guess. Yeah, it was... Uh, this was a very, very bad day for the Green Bay Police Department. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would love to, the meetings after this happened, I would have loved to, I'd love to see footage of them sitting down and talking and just being like, ah, so that didn't quite go the way we yeah. had intended. Yeah. And one thing that confused me is, this is the 1920s. I have to assume Green Bay's police department is not super huge. How you would not know the new guy hired as well? Yeah, that's also very... It's weird that he's going around on patrol without a uniform. That's weird enough. Do you not meet every new cop who gets hired? Yeah, I mean... you got to figure five police officers, maybe. In oh, the, I'm uh, sure it's I, more than five. Really? Was, in 19, in the 20s? Yeah, I mean, it's Green Bay. Green Bay is a decent-sized town. But. It is now. What was the population in the 20s? I don't know. More than five <laughs> cops, though. If you say so. I, I, I question that. You bring up... And the other question is, is, okay, he's out of uniform. So he was actually patrolling? Yeah, the reason I don't maybe I wasn't really clear about that. Part of what like a beat cop did back in those days is they'd walk around and they'd like tug on doors mm-hmm. and just make sure that everybody was keeping their doors locked, the businesses. The other guy sees him like in the alley doing this, and it looks like he's looking in to the what windows. places he could. Yeah, what places he can break into. Really, he was just going and checking doors. Yeah, but it's still also why do you have a cop that's out patrolling? Out of uniform. It's probably not a good idea. Yeah, that that doesn't seem like... I mean, that just seems like making the cop's job that much harder. Because now they're going to get all sorts of calls. Like, there's some weird guy pulling on doors everywhere. Uh, No no uniform, no badge. Just some guy with a flashlight (laughs) and a gun pulling on doors. Yeah, which does not sound like a good thing. It does not sound like the Green Bay Police Department's new hire. No, no. (laughs) I mean, I think the the other guy arresting him, I think he made the right move on that, even though, you know, it looked embarrassing. Uh, He made the right move. Yeah, I I don't think you can fault him for his move at all. In fact, because... Had he not done that, it would have turned out to be the other way around. Yeah. And didn't you say, like, he actually was in the jail? I, I feel like this should have been sorted almost immediately once he brought <laughs> the guy back to the police department, right? Well, the, the way the story is written, he was in the jail for a couple hours before anybody bothered to check up on uh, him. I, so. Wow. <laughs> Well, don't worry, people. I'm sure that the police, this would never happen today. They're much better organized than they were in the 20s. Yeah, so I, let's go with that. I so. don't think it would happen <laughs> these days, but it's just, what a what a time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I don't know if I would put that on the epic episodes. As far as comic value goes, yeah. this one is pretty high up there, I'd yeah, say. Yeah. I, I think it's better than average. And and we had no deaths, so it's okay to kind of take it on a on a funny side. Well, it's a, it's 100 years it's ago. Old, yeah. So. <laughs> so, I, mean, I mean, no disrespect to the guy getting... I mean, getting 177 pallets, that's, that's, that's terrible. Sk- but it's a, it's 100 years ago, so I don't think he's going to be too upset about, about joking a, a little bit. Right. And you know, when you really think about it, too... If they have to pull a hundred pellets out of you today, mm-hmm. that's probably gonna suck. Oh yeah. Uh, can you imagine what it was like in the twenties if they had to pull all those pellets out of you? Yeah. I mean, they were probably just filleting them like a fish and yeah. just pulling stuff out. And wow. Yeah. But he recovered. Yeah. Amazing. In fact. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we can wrap this episode up. Unless you got anything else, Gavin? No, that's it. <laughs> he's just like he's like no i'm totally done no, no that's that's all i got this time all right well we will be back in two weeks with either a new episode or a fine fine rerun from our vault and thanks everybody for tuning in we'll see you on the next one all right